gear check with Sage here, and today I'm talking about what's in my backpack, and specifically the Snowmad 45 from North Face. Here, the Snowmad is one of North Face's uh, ski packs, and it comes in a bunch of different sizes. I'd been using the 34 liter for a while, but last year I started using the 45, and I thought that maybe I'd just use it on certain days, and I needed extra room, but I really started loving just having the extra space even if I didn't need it, and the pack cinches down so well, I never really felt like it was that big or bulky. When I was using the 34 liter pack, I could get most of what I needed in for the day, but it was like Tetris in there and just perfectly packed every time. So anytime I needed something, it was kind of a jam up because I didn't have enough extra room to move stuff around. So when I started using the 45 last year, it was just so much easier to manage. And while I never had it fully wedged and fully maxed out, I really liked using it. So that's what I'm talking about today. But first, before we get into the pack, I'm gonna talk about what do I keep in my pack. And what's in my pack? Well, it depends. <laughs> and it depends on the kind of day. So kind of gonna go over a general backcountry ski tour day and things may or may change depending on the mission, the objective, the day, the weather, the snow conditions. So this is kind of the ballpark, what I generally carry most days I go ski touring. And to start things out, uh, let's talk beacons. So Avi Safety, one of the first things, and Beacon Shovel Probe, and the knowledge of how to use it all. So practicing with your beacon, practicing getting your probe together, practicing putting your shovel together, practicing digging practicing digging in a team and all those things are really great skills especially this time of year it's the fall right now for me here and this time of year is great to work on that practice i've used a couple different beacons i've used bca tracker 3 for a lot of years but i just recently started using this mammut one and I like how some of the new beacons have a bigger range and you get a signal much faster from a further distance. So that's kind of the biggest difference between this Mammut and the Tractor 3. On top of that, probe and shovel, finding a long probe. I use this 300cm probe and I've used a bunch of different ones in the past. I used to use this carbon one and I believe it was only about 240 cms which is pretty long but I found that skiing in places like Alaska, BC, the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific Northwest we deal with some deep snow and it is possible that a burial could be in soft snow up to 300 cms and you want to be able to find someone if that's the case. Unlikely scenario but why not and the weight is negligible. While this probe is aluminum and the shorter one is carbon, it's hardly noticeable how much more this weighs and for a better product. So I prefer using the long ones now. I also carry a shovel. I have a bunch of different ones that I use. This is kind of my mini one. Um, it's kind of the lightest one I have. Bigger shovel, you can move more snow quicker, but it's also harder on your body. So there's sort of a diminishing returns necessarily on them just getting bigger and bigger shovels as well as just how it fits in your pack. Like I said, depending on the mission, I'll use a different one, but I've been liking this one. And a snow saw for digging pits. I bought this a while ago from G3 and it's kind of a sweet one because it has uh, some, just some snow science uh, indicators here, checking grain size, and uh, primarily use the snow saw for digging snow pits, occasional cutting branches, and nice to have in the pack. So as far as main safety items, that's what I bring along. Also bring along a first aid kit. Same with the first aid kit, I have a few different ones. I keep a big one in my truck. That's kind of the like highway trauma or the backup trauma kit in the truck. I usually bring a small one like this. This is pretty light weighs a little bit. Uh, this is kind of one of my bigger, bulkier ones, and I have an even smaller one that I'll take if I'm going super light. Surprisingly, this doesn't weigh that much, and it's worth having. Another great device for safety is one of these trackers. 
This one is an older inReach, but there's some really cool ones. There's newer Garmin makes a newer inReach that's small. And you can, if you're out of cell service or you're out of cell range or your cell phone's dead, this is a great tool to be able to call for help or just let your party know that everything's A-OK. -okay. So all of this stuff is gear that I've bought and used for a lot of years now. None of it is given to me aside from, uh, in my backcountry kit, aside from my skins. Skins, these are from Atomic. And whatever skins you have are probably great. Just finding a good pair of skins that's cut right and stored well and take good care of them when you're on the hill is key. I love these ones from Atomic. They're really easy to use and they have like a hybrid glue, which is kind of like a glueless sort of um, kind of surface to them. So they're not super sticky. When you pull them apart, it's quite easy to pull them apart. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Some skins are so hard to get them apart that uh, I find that to be a bit annoying. And I like that how simple these come apart. The flip side to that is getting them stuck to your skis can have a little bit of nuance and I find that they stick really well if you apply them to your skis, make sure there's no snow on them. I give a good push with my hand, like almost like I'm ironing the skin onto my ski and then I slap it in the snow and click in and step on it and put that weight on it. As soon as you put your weight on it, it tends to stick nicely to the ski and you won't get any snow in between. And if ever I do, if I mismanage my skins or something happens and I get a bunch of snow in the inside, if you pop them off, scrape them on your ski or snowboard, you can get them clean again and restuck and they'll last you the rest of the day. So I haven't had too much problem with that. Some other safety and just communication devices that are really handy are radios. I love using radios even when you're within yelling distance. Yelling takes a lot of energy and just being able to talk in your normal voice through a radio or through a mic is just so much nicer. It's a little bit less stressful if there's ever anything that happens or, or even if you're just trying to ask where to go, it's a little bit better to be able to talk with your party. The key about radios is making sure everyone has one. And I've used a lot of different radios over the years. The simple, just cheap, um, ones you can find at like your local electronics stores. This is like a Cobra, it's like $60. These are great, they still work good. I've used these bigger ones like that BCA makes. Um, these ones are okay too, works on the same band as these. It's kind of nice, they can talk to each other. And then I've also used the UHF VHF compatible or dual band radios like these Baofangs or Kenwoods. The Baofangs, these are pretty cheap. You can buy like four of them for the price of one Kenwood radio, but they also have been a bit finicky. Of course, I've had issues with both the nicer radios and these. I have just a fleet of them, and what's nice is you can put a handset on it, big nice cord, and uh, these are great because you can talk to other safety personnel other than just your group if you have the channels, if you know what the channels for your local ski patrol or search and rescue, and these can even reach air to ground. So if you have are working with a heli company or if there's a rescue company that has air capacity, these are great because you can talk to aircraft as well. So that's pretty much it for safety and stuff that I keep in my pack on a general basis. I'd say there's a few other things like few extras that I would say. Uh, extra layer. It's nice to bring an extra layer. This is just an extra mid layer. It's light, easy to throw in the pack. I usually bring an extra lens rather than bring a whole extra pair of goggles. My goggles never really fall off my head. They're usually locked onto my helmet. So just swapping out lenses, whether this one is like a low light option or if you just need to switch one because they get dirty or snowy rather. So extra that, extra lens. I like to bring an extra pair of gloves. I'll usually bring whatever gloves I'm not kind of, whatever type of glove I'm not really wearing. So if I'm wearing a thin glove to start my day, I'll bring a warmer glove in my backpack or vice versa. If I'm cold in the morning, I'll start out in a big warm glove like this one, but then I might switch out to a thinner one as the day goes on and I warm up. So it's nice to have a few options and extras. 
Of course, I got my helmet. The other things that I'm not providing here are your food and water for the day. I'm not a huge like big lunch guy. I'd rather make a bunch of things that I can kind of snack on through the day. That way I don't have that kind of big stomach gut crash in the middle of the day when you eat a bunch of food and then kind of takes an hour for you to recover. So I like having snackable food with me. But that's what I keep in my pack. Now let's put it in there. I'll show you kind of where I put everything and uh, what I like to do. In addition to the extras, I also like having a puffy jacket as an extra. This would be similar to the glove scenario. I might start the day with it in the morning and then it goes in the pack for the rest of the day. Or maybe if it's a normal morning, then it just lives in the pack and I'll pull it out if I need it. Snowman has a couple cool features. One of which I like is this back zip that opens completely. You can unzip the entire back and it flips all the way open, which is really nice. Once you get this thing full, you can access stuff at the very bottom of your pack from the very to the very top of your pack just by opening it either all the way or just opening it to a section. So it's pretty nice to be able to get to all your stuff with this big back panel opening. Inside the back panel, there's a hydration sleeve and even an extra zipper there if you wanted to keep something thin. I try to not put too much that bulky things in this part of the pack because it can kind of push into your back when you're wearing it. There's a mesh zipper pocket and a goggle pouch inside, which is quite handy. And then on the outside, we've got an upper stash compartment in the top, pretty standard, pretty good size, has a zip section in it for separating out your stuff, clipping your keys if you take your keys with you. I generally try to advise not to do that. And then a big external pouch, shoving jackets, ski straps, skins, helmet. This pouch is awesome on the outside. It doesn't seal up, but it's great for things that you just need to carry temporarily. And then the safety pocket. And the safety pocket opens up and has a bunch of internal sleeves built in already. So it's just awesome for organizing stuff. So let's start with that. I like to uh, organize this kind of specifically. I take my snow saw, snow saw goes all the way to the outside, handle in the middle, and my probe on the closest side. Now this is pretty specific why I do it like this. Shovel blade goes on top of everything. Now, the reason for this is that the way this pack zips up is that the zippers end closed on this side of the pack. So why I like to have everything organized the way I do is because that if something happens and you need to get to your safety equipment, it's really easy to do so. And you can just do it with one zipper and without undoing any clips. So rather than unclipping anything, I can just open this one zipper. Now I have access to my probe, which is usually the first thing you're gonna need. And then immediately after, I have access to my shovel. The snow saw is the item that I need to use the least amount of times and I'm never in a rush to use it. If you're digging a pit, you got plenty of time. So it's not the kind of safety thing that I need to pull out really quickly. So that's why I keep it all the way on that side. The stash pouches on the sides make it easy to store everything and you don't have to have the extra step of taking the probe bag out and removing your probe from it. I just put the probe right in the sleeve. One aspect about this exterior pouch that I love, it's really huge, like I said. Sometimes if I'm hiking, I'll store my jacket in there while I'm hiking up. That way, when I get to the top, it's easy to pull my jacket out. If I'm skiing down, sometimes I'll leave my skins in here if it's not too snowy. Skins in. When I'm carrying my helmet, I love putting my helmet in here. It sits in here nicely. I go visor down, and a key thing that I like to do is I take the goggle retention strap off. I route the strap across it, and then I put the retention strap back on, but over the strap. That way, if the helmet were to squirt out of the side, 
or fall out. It's still attached to your backpack. You don't want to lose it down the mountain. Rarely happens, but if a stick or something were to bump it, it is possible. So that's kind of a nice little tip that I like to do to keep that helmet in there. Now as far as the interior of the pack goes, I like to keep the heavier items at the bottom. My water bottle is one of those big items. That's always at the bottom. While the first aid kit isn't very heavy, I'm not using it very often, so that goes at the bottom. And then on top of that, it's just layering. My gear, my extras. While I'm hiking, toss my goggles into the goggle pouch. It's soft, so they won't get scratched. Extra puffy. Now the radio. I sometimes will run my radio along the outside of the pack so then the antenna is near the edge. If you have it jammed in the middle, the antenna won't work as well. But if the antenna is right along the edge of the pack, it seems to work pretty well. Maybe uh, if you're really far away from your party, you could take it out to use it. But generally, I keep it in there. I'll zip up my pack, run the mic out through the top loop and then down through these elastic straps that are provided on the strap and then clip it to there. And that way, got my mic on the outside of my pack, everything's included, I'll throw this puppy on. There we go, ready to go. Nice setup, nice swing weight, doesn't feel too heavy. Great pack. Another cool thing I like about this backpack is that it comes with this little elastic strap. And my gloves are inside. But you can use it to stash your gloves, stash a hat, you get hot, pull your hat off, jam it in there, whatever you need. That's what's in my pack. Uh, yeah, to see the cinches, these side cinches, open up if you need more volume. Plenty of ski carry options. Go side carry. There's a deployable, deployable ski carrier here. Really nice, pops out of the bottom. And you can tuck it away if you're not using it. Cinch up these for if you, don't need the extra room. And away we go. So there we go, that's the snowman. 45 what's in my pack be sure to check out the next episode which is the sharps video what i carry when it's steep and deep thanks for watching